death just shows the ultimate absurdity of life. Are you trying to get me to lose my temper because I'm about to put you through that goddamn window? See? That's what I mean. Life is absurd. Don't say that. God forgive you. There is no God. Hey! After two seasons, The Sopranos remains one of the hottest shows on television. This past Sunday night's two-hour premiere of the new season set a record with 11.3 million viewers. Creator, writer, and executive producer David Chase is the man behind the show. After a career as a writer and producer of such shows as The Rockford Files and Northern Exposure, he came up with the idea of a television series about the family life of a contemporary mafioso family. After being turned down by four networks, he brought the show to HBO. It has turned out to be the most successful show ever for the cable network. The New York Times called it a masterpiece, the greatest work of American popular culture of the last quarter century. Here is a scene from one of the programs. The latest thought on treatment of panic attack syndrome is a three-pronged approach. So it's a syndrome medication to treat the depression, psychotherapy, and cognitive behavioral therapy. We've got you on medication. If you feel you're ready, you could see a behaviorist. What, what do you mean? Talk to somebody else? I am pleased to welcome David Chase to this table for the very first time. Uh, we have wanted him for, here for a while, and I'm finally glad we got him. Uh, welcome. You don't Thank do you. a lot of this, do you? Uh, I have lately. We've oh, you have so more with the new more season. It, more and more. Do you think that's part of the reason you got so much attention? I mean, every magazine, every so many television and newspaper stories about it contributed to the anticipation of the new season. I don't. I don't know. I, we didn't didn't seek it really. I mean, I, I know I didn't. I mean, you don't have to seek it. It's out there. But it's I mean, out you, there. Yeah. But it brought you into the process too. I mean, it brought me into the process more. I mean, I've I've done more of this as the show went on the air. I never had done it three years ago. I'd never been in front of a camera or talk to a journalist yeah. um, and it's been a kind of a learning curve Man, and you know what you've been missing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you, did you now realize your life was incomplete uh, I do I really do it's a strange because <laughs> you had on television and you hadn't spent a lot of time talking to journalists it's a lot of the things that you hear about it turn out to be true <laughs> <laughs> for better or worse right exactly uh, that's a classic moment there for me it, because of the following it shows you his humanity in a sense, I mean, he's real, he's, I mean, he's saying all the things. Your ear says, gee, that sounds exactly the way it ought to sound, mm. you know, to me. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting dialogue. Mm. Um, help me out. Well, to me, that sounds like, sort of like my father, yeah. or anybody's father, you know, that business. Uh, I'm putting money in your pocket. Enough, where are well, the enough results? Money in your pocket. Yeah, I'm putting exactly. money that in your like pocket. Father, where are the results? Right, my father-in-law. Yeah. That's the way they would talk. Because yeah. if I put money on the table, I expect something. Exactly. And right. I don't happen to believe I'm seeing anything from my money. Right. Now and we're either really... going to find something, or else we're going to stop this. Correct. He's not really doing what it takes to produce results. Of he's course. not the best patient in the world. Yeah. Uh, probably not the worst either. And he doesn't want to go through this behavior modification he stuff. He's doing enough of that. Right. Right. Now, where did this idea come from of, of a mafia, a maid band, a mafia person going to a psychiatrist? Well, I've been in therapy a lot myself since my early 30s. But <laughs> um, well, there it goes. <laughs> uh, so that's, you have to have, have to have a working knowledge of that. And I think everyone who works, every writer on our show has spent uh, quite a bit of time in that, in that, oh, wait, in that chair. David, just stop. This, are you saying to me that, that this show has this component because it, it meant so much to the lives of the people who create the show? No, no, I'm saying now. Now, it meant a lot to me. Therapy was, therapy, very, therapy was very important to me. I don't know that it ever changed me all that much, yeah. but certainly having that release valve, and I did learn things about myself. Um, so I knew a lot about therapy, and therapy, I always found therapy to be an interesting, somewhat funny interchange between people. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, there's something about it that's, that's silly. And, uh, and I always liked it, and, uh, you know, my, 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 I was in therapy because my parents were who they were, naturally. That's the, probably the only reason you go. And my mother was uh, uh, an eccentric, kind of very morbid person, and so I found myself in therapy. And my wife had always said to me, you, you really have to write about your mother, because um, she's very funny. And I always got a lot of, you know, at dinner parties and places, I always got the most amount of laughs telling parent stories because right. my mother was who she was. This series, why did you create it? 
Other the than you needed uh, to do something, so why not? I needed to do something. Is that it? I needed to do something. I was waiting for my big break in the movies, which I was waiting for for years and years and years, toiling away in television unhappily. Yeah, that's it, why you're going to see the shrink. Well, that was part of that was a lot of it. Yeah. And I would go to the shrink and I'd say, you know, why am I not? Why hasn't the movies discovered me? And why can't I make this break? And yes. they would try to. <laughs> they would, they would try not to say because you're a whore and you take the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, they try to say something better than that, but that was the truth. And so I was, you know. So I had a development deal in the hopes that um, I always used to take these TV development deals at different companies, and I would try to write screenplays at the same time I was would be like a stipend or a right, fellowship right. that would allow me to write screenplays while I was developing TV. And and then after the Larry Sanders show, I wanted to be at uh, what was then Brillstein Gray. Right. And I went there, and they said they wanted a show that sort of pushed the envelope, and that's that's what I wanted to hear. And actually, there was a guy there who worked for Brad, named Lloyd Braun, who's now, I guess, head of ABC, who gave me this very inspiring He's speech. He's a great guy. I know him. He gave, he gave me a... The co-head of their entertainment division. Right. He gave me a very inspiring speech about... He, they believed I had a great TV series inside me uh, in the lobby by the elevator. He said, he said this, and I thought... I got sort of touched yeah. because I was rather cynical about the whole thing. Yeah. That you've got a great series. That I've got a great series. So how did you go from that to The Sopranos? Uh, he said, in that same meeting, for example, he said, how would you like to do a uh, series about, like, The Godfather? And I said, no, I don't want to do a TV series like The Godfather. Because I kept picturing the overcoats and the 40s cars and things like that. And, um, but then I was driving home, and it's, the idea stuck, and I remembered I had this feature idea about a mob, which was just an idea, about a mobster who goes to therapy um, because his mother's driving him crazy, and the, the therapist helps him to realize that his mother is his enemy. I had this, I pitched this as a, as a feature, and I thought, well, gee, maybe that would work as a series. And so you went to put pencil to paper, and there I, you were. We, no, we went and pitched that to Fox, and uh, they said, you know, we flushed it out, and, and they said, yeah, fine, go write it, and then I wrote it, and nothing ever happened. And so that, and was that, did that turn out to be the pilot? That was the pilot. So you come up with a pilot, Gandolfini. How crucial is he to this series? Uh, there's no way to there's no way to state it. Um, he's just there wouldn't be the show wouldn't be at all if it wasn't for him. Um, we probably would have gotten to make the show. I don't think we'd be here today. Um, he just is that character, and he's and the, the humanity that he projects sounds like a stupid the humanity no, no, he projects, sorry. but the, the humanity that he embodies and that comes through his eyes. Is the key to everything. What do you mean by humanity? He has uh, feelings. People, his feelings, his... Uh, he, not only that he has feelings, I think that people see him as a person much like themselves, you know, walking around on this third planet from the sun, yes. not knowing what the hell's going on. <laughs> That's right. It just so happens that he's part of an enterprise that engages in theft and killing and lots of other things. Mm -hmm. But he has all the same kinds of... I Which, think so. I that's think part of it, isn't it? You're creating that these people, you know, they're not like movie heroes. These are real people who have real lives and real issues and real girlfriends and et cetera, et cetera. Right. They just happen to be engaged in a business that's criminal. I don't know that it's that they just happen to be. Um, they are. They've chosen, they've chosen this. Mm -hmm. And um, there must be something about their makeup that causes them to be in this business. Why is it? Why is it the subject of so many movies and mafia? Yeah. What is it about the mafia? Is it the code? People ask me this question more than anything else. It probably is the code. I think it's. A, I think it's because the complexity of the world nowadays and how people's lives are governed by bureaucracies and institutions and media. But I think people are basically tribal. I think we still hanker for to be hang out with our tribe and to be with a bunch of people who, at least we say, these guys will back me up and I'll back them up no matter what. That, I think, is, is very appealing, that idea. Mm -hmm. And I think also the idea that justice is actually meted out there. You know, if somebody looks at you crooked or de betrays you, you, you get to have your revenge and they, get, they pay. And, and, and in our lives, it doesn't happen. And they do it with impunity. They do it with impunity. And uh, it's satisfying, I think. I think it's satisfying for people to see turncoats get punished. And, and people with their own code, too. 
Yeah. Uh, That's the tribal code. Right, right. Just to give you a sense, if for somehow you have never seen this, and there are some people in America who have not seen The Sopranos, here it is, uh, an episode from the current season. This is about Sambo, right? I'm paying for that goddamn college. I don't know what's going on over there. But if you want to make a big scene at your daughter's new college, then comb your hair and come right along. Embarrass her. Alienate her. Or better yet, cut her off. Let her drop out of there and go to a state school. Or maybe move back in here. You've heard this too, and there are three or four things I have to ask you because uh, people who may not have heard you, even though you've been asking a lot, do you worry about glorifying these people? Where's your code? Uh, well, I'm the kind of person that worries about everything, but <laughs> I, I get, <laughs> That's you but um, That's really a good question. I'm not, no, be, I, I actually no, because I think they're, at least he is paying every day. He doesn't seem happy to How's me. He, he's paying because he's unhappy? Well, he's miserable. He knows there's something really wrong. David, I mean, come on. You know, I ask you, is he glorifying? Are you glorifying around lifestyle? And you say, well, he's paying every day because he's unhappy. You know, he's unhappy. Therefore, he's paying. Somebody just, well, he's somebody just did something terrible. That's okay. He's being punished because he's unhappy. He's not a happy person, so he's being punished. <laughs> <laughs> you see how silly this is. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Are we glorifying it? I don't know. I, I, to a certain extent, I guess we might be, but hanging out in the, round, back of, in the back of a pork store all day long, yeah. um, that terrible room at the Bada Bing, I guess that's, if that's glorifying a life, I, I'm yeah. not sure that it is. But yeah. certainly, it probably presents a... a it probably presents an appealing idea of the freedom right. of just doing what you want all day long. That's what it is about them. It's sort of intriguing. People think, oh, my God, they go, they hang out, they talk, they play cards, they go see their girlfriend. I mean, they do stuff. After the, three episodes into the first season, my brother-in-law, who's a banker in Florida, said that a guy that he knows, <laughs> after the third episode, who was a, ba a bank president, I think, said, after the show was over, said to his wife, you know, I wish I was Tony Soprano. I tell you what this show has, too, which I admire you for. It has very interesting and strong women. Mm -hmm. Right? They are. Sister? The sister, the daughter, daughter, Carmela, and right. of course the mother, and Melvin. Right. Yeah, they are. That was not intentional. That's just... It's just the writers happened to write them that way. That's the way it came out. Yeah. What's the challenge of creating a series like this where there's much anticipation, you want a truckload of Emmys of and Creating stuff. it or, or keeping it going? Or keep, or keeping it going. In other words, you look at year three and you say, holy man, I mean, they, you know, they're expecting a lot of me. I do. I do. I, I, I was feeling really good about, uh, about the episodes until I read all these positive <laughs> reviews. <laughs> oh, and then I started thinking, oh, oh wait till they God. see episode well, se F7 I mean, or something. Yeah. You know, and, and as my wife says, you, shouldn't, you should not read it. Just leave it alone. And, yeah. and I think she's got a point. It's impossible not to. But it's, yeah. it's just become so, I don't know. Um, you think, well, nothing can possibly live up to what they've said. That's the way I feel. Nothing no, could live up to what they said. And I also noticed how journalists and audience members get very sort of pissy about it. You know, they, if the show doesn't go the way they wanted it to go yeah. or thought it was going to go, they become proprietary and kind of annoyed. Yeah. I know people who love the show. I mean, I've listened to them talk about picking apart the first two episodes. And they're all saying that four, three, four, five, six, seven are going to be much better. But, you know, these are the problems <laughs> with one and two. You know, roll tape. <laughs> you, you know it's true. Roll tape. Here it is. If you'd rather, I can invite them all back to her place. Janice, what are you doing? Very good. We can all take a break from eating for five minutes. It won't kill us. Most of you will probably remember that this was her favorite song. I thought it might help us get rolling. Now, there's been lots of talk that you're going to end this thing after the fourth season. Yeah. I asked Brad Gray about that. He said... Yeah, I mean, I was asked this at the Museum of Modern Art, and uh, I have a contract for four years, right. but um, I didn't realize that people would con be so concerned about when the show was going to earn or end or yeah. that they would pay that much attention to what I said, yeah. and uh, it created kind of a furor so, to my surprise. All I really meant was is that I would hate to have to do the show for contractual reasons if it had lost its juice. juice. 
you were introducing this lesbian element too. Not really. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't. No. It's just one scene there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the most exciting thing? Tell me why this season is exciting for you. Give me some sense of what makes this where you're taking us. This season. Huh. Why is this season exciting? Are you pushing I, the envelope somewhere? What are you doing? No, uh, no. You know that's that, that's a difficult. It's, it's difficult not. That's a tricky thing, pushing the envelope, because you can push the envelope so much that you start to seem desperate, or yeah. or you, do or you really, or it feels like you're pushing, and that's yeah. and I, I really want to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. I, I almost would rather have, I almost would rather have less happen. You'd than, rather be redundant than be uh, too out front, or or slower paced than be like wacky. You know, yeah. I don't want it to get to that, but um, I think. I think it's seeing the children grow up a little bit this season is what's really interesting. Really? Both Anthony Jr. and Meadow. And what happens to them and how it all affects Tony. Right. How it affects Tony and how growing up in that house has affected them. Yeah. Edie Falco. What about it? <laughs> An obvious pick for you? I mean, did you see somebody you'd seen before wanted or did it happen in casting? No, no. Yeah, it happened in casting. I mean, she was recommended. She had, I, had, I hadn't noticed her on Oz or seen her on Oz and she was a, an HBO recommendation. So she came in audition yeah. like well, that. Like that? Just like that, yeah, no doubt. And how'd you find Gallopini? Same way. Although his audition process was a little more... Uh, happened in stages. He came in and... Man, that must be torturous for an actor. <laughs> I, I, they want you to come back. They may like you. They may not like you. I, I found this, this real, is a big part. I've had this. I've had this realization just this year. I came to the realization that actors talk about their audition. I had a great audition, or I have to go to sleep tomorrow. I have an audition, or I'm working for this audition. And I had an audition two weeks ago. It was really great. And I realized that for many of them, that's as far as it gets. Yeah. So that audition is the performance. That's why they they talk about their auditions like. Like they've done a, like they've uh, done it. It's a performance. It's that a they performance. Did. Yeah. This was when they were on stage, yeah. even though it was for five minutes on somebody's five tape minutes that they'll never see. Waiting in a drafty hallway in Queens, and uh, <laughs> for some of them, they'll remember this for a long time. Yeah. Even if they didn't get the role. And in in a word, why is this so sweet for you? Well, there's no reason why it isn't. There's nothing. No. What's not to like? Yeah. You know? But it is, in a sense, that it is the fulfillment of a dream. Create your own series. Well, that, as I say, that had never been really been my dream to create my own series. Yeah, I wanted to create movie, movies, but, create but, movies. but, it, but ha it has turned out that this has been creatively an amazing thing for me. And has it changed your ambition, or are you still sitting there saying, this is something I'm doing until I make my great movie? No, it has changed my ambition to a certain extent. I, I have found great creative satisfaction doing this, and I would still like to do a movie because a, a movie is a whole other, it's a whole other thing. Promise me you will not do Soprano the movie. <laughs> Why do I have to promise that? <laughs> uh, probably not, but why do I have to promise that? You haven't thought that? about it before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people talk about it, you know. Um, You've thought about it? People have not. I have, well, of course, I've thought about it. I, I, I thought, I thought when after the pilot was made that the show would not, you know, they were trying to decide whether to buy it. And I yeah. thought, well, maybe what can happen is yeah. if they don't buy it, they'll invest another half a million or something and we can make it as a movie. Would it make it as a movie? Would it? Would, Who knows? You don't know. No, because some, has, you, typically you, they haven't been that good. But I know this show has has confounded a lot of expectations. So I'm not prepared to say it wouldn't. You know that's exactly right. And you don't know whether. I mean, sometimes television gives characters an opportunity to develop that movie. Don't have time to do. Mm, mm -hmm. So you really get a chance to know and like Tony or admire, mm -hmm, or have right. fun, or enjoy, or whatever you might say. You get to know relationships you couldn't Little do in a details. Movie. Yeah. On the other hand, Traffic, a very successful movie, this year comes from a television series. Right. A British television right. series. I know. Different and condensed, but I know. Hmm. I, I I don't. Who knows if the weather would succeed as well? It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. We'll check back in later in the season. Please do. <laughs> David Chase, the creator of Soprano, the hottest, most talked about subject of this television series. Uh, it did phenomenal numbers as it opened uh, its season on Sunday at 9 p.m. on HBO. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.